Welcome to Phoenix Energy, the channel, and today I'm gonna show you how to draw this. So first, we're gonna, as usual, open a new document, and we're gonna create a layer for the sketch that we're going to name sketch, obviously. I'm gonna select like a random uh, column, and uh, I'm gonna try to very quickly sketch the idea. So I'm using no reference for this work, guys. I rarely work with references. So I'm just going with the flow. Um, just going to uh, draw. Most of the time, what is very easy is either a profile, you know, or a semi profile. So here I'm going for semi profile because that's one of my favorite poses, I thought. So I'm using the 6B pencil in your library of brushes and uh, I'm just quickly giving the idea of what it's going to look like. Obviously when you start with your sketch um, you will be able to modify whatever you want even at the lining process or down the line at the coloring step of your work. So I'm thinking of putting a nose ring to this beautiful lady but you will see at the end that I have decided to remove it. So you don't have to be very precise in your, in your line at the sketching, at the sketching step. I'm just roughly um, drawing the, let's say the movement. So here the dynamic part is going to be the movement of the hair. So I'm going to create then a new layer for the line and I'm going to switch brush for the lining process. Uh, I really really like uh, Studio Pen. It gives a really sleek line, really smooth, uh, you know, calligraphy like. So you choose the thickness that you prefer, that you're more comfortable with. I'm going with a medium size and what is really good with this brush is that um, the line thickness will vary according to the pressure that you exercise on the pen. I start the colouring then with exactly the same pen and I'm using flat painting. Just the same color without any effect everywhere just to give a basis to our drawing. So now that I have the flat painting applied I'm going to select the brush that I'll be using for all the other steps of uh, the coloring process. So I like to have something a bit rough, something with a bit of noise, if you remember if you have seen my previous videos. Um, so I'm going to use flat brush that I really like. And if you can see, I'm also um, varying the opacity of the brush. So I'm going to apply very quickly a darker tone to the parts where I think there are shades. Same for the hair. Once you have done that, you create a new layer for a third color. I recommend to work with three colors. I think that three colors of the same shade is, uh, is the minimum and it's great. So as you can see, I'm taking a slightly darker color and I'm going to work on top of it, slightly even darker here. So I start to apply the darker tones in the creases of the eyes, under the eyebrow, all the zones around the, the eye really, without forgetting. Um, the areas around the nose, the hair, etc. And you do the same thing 
with the hair as well, a darker green. So you have three colors and you work your way through it. So this is pretty much what you have at this stage. So now what we're going to do, we're going to create another layer, but this time for um, the finishing touches. So I always have on a separate layer um, all the little things that I want to add. In that case, it's going to be a bit of makeup. It's going to be the blush on her cheeks. So I'm choosing a round brush, something very soft. And I'm also reducing the opacity of the brush itself. And I'm just applying so the pink on the cheeks. So all the finishing touches that you have in mind can come on this layer. If you also want to modify something out of the, the, the line, um, it can come here. So I'm going to apply also the same pinkish around the nose, around the eyes, to give her like a fresh look, you know, like a, a springish um, electric look. So still using, I'm using here a flat brush with a bit more of a, of pressure on the pen for the eye line. You know, it's all in the small details. So I like to um, always put, um, for example, the the inside of the eye, the eye line. I think it's really important. Think of it. Also, I'm going to give a bit of a of a shape and of a shadow to the eye itself. I always say that what really makes a difference is the detail and the attention that you put into the detail. So I could have gone without um, that shade of gray for the white of the eye, but you know, it does make a difference. It's very quick. I'm using only one shade, but it does do the work. Same for the eye. I'm going to play a bit with the colors. So I'm just testing a bit. So I'm using um, a brighter, almost yellowish brown. I have decided to give her um, eyes of a different color. I'm gonna switch color. I'm gonna take something dark brown to brighten the, the black. For the lips, we're gonna do the same thing, but this time we're gonna give it a bit of a plump look with a lighter peach. You add lights. There we go. I've actually just decided to add the, all the lighting effects on a separate brush and to use my famous light pen brush. Um, but first, I'm going to switch back to Studio Pen and I'm going to correct some parts of the line. So here, the eyes, let's say the eyeliner, as you can see, it does make a difference. It does give a bit of depth to the look. I'm going to add again, so the eyeliner onto the other eye. And especially Studio Pen is amazing for that because as I said, it has a calligraphy kind of uh, finish. So the more you put pressure on the pen and the thicker the line. When you lift the pen, um, it will give you a thinner line. So now I'm going to create a new layer. And uh, I'd like to adjust a bit the line of the nose. Um, I think it's quite important that you also vary the thickness of some of your inking lines. Not everywhere, but as you can see, here and there, like um, the middle of the lips, the corner of the nose, to have this uh, thicker look on some strategic part of the line also gives a more dynamic, I would say, um, more dynamic feel to 
your line to your inking. So I'm adding eyelashes. And I'm finally creating another layer for all the lighting effects. I decided to separate it because we're going to add lights also in the hair. So I'm taking um, my light brush to start with. Light brush, if you remember, gives a softer, softer finish. So that's too much, so I'm going to reduce the size of it. Uh, too much again. So, yes, so it's going to give you a diffuse light. And that's exactly what we want first. So I always start with light brush to give like a softer diffuse light effect here and there on some parts of the drawing. And then on top of it, I will be using light pen. So I give her some shiny, shiny light river, reverberation onto the hair as well. It's very quickly done guys, if you can see. It doesn't really matter. Um, you can still erase and fix it a bit with the eraser, but uh, very quickly done. You can play with it cut the line of it a bit just like that there we go and again in the eyes if it's you think it's too much you can just erase some parts of it I'm taking a slightly darker color for the hair because remember with light pen or light brush even if you take a, a dark shade, it will still give you that very bright and luminous um, effect. So, and then I'm working again on top of what I just did. So I'm going to just draw strokes of light a bit everywhere in the hair. It will also give more definition to the hair threads and again add some lights where I want the sun to basically hit. Again I'm not really thinking of what is the source of light. It's not a realistic you know drawing guys so you can just play with it and I just decide to put something on the shoulder like that. Now I'm gonna switch to light pen. So light pen gives you a more precise um, solar effect. So I'm gonna add the little bits of light on top of light brush. It gives a very white finish, but that's what we want. Play with it. And again, in the, in the hair. So play also with the thickness of your pen with light pen because it will, it will create the illusion of the hair thread quite well. So you can just play, let's say, with three different thicknesses. Here I'm just using two because that's still a, a quick illustration and maybe in a video in the future we will be working a bit more on this one just to give more depth add more coloring effects etc etc but for now that's enough so a bit of light into the eyebrows as well I'm gonna take the darkest green and I'm gonna add some Hair thread flying a bit everywhere. I don't want it to be black like the line. Here we go. My God, it's nice. Here and there. There we go. And I switched to uh, Studio Pen for that. As you can see, that's not light pen anymore. 
So, so far that's what we have. And I want to play with it. I'm not really sure what background. Oops! If I'm not on the correct layer, obviously it's not gonna work. Again, I'm, go I'm ju just going to modify it from the background layer. So I'm just gonna put like a purplish background color. There we go. Flat painting, it does not matter. And we are pretty much at the end of this illustration, guys. Um, that was quite quick. There's still a lot of things that we can do on top of that in terms of blending the colors together, adding um, an additional... Um, should I put that? I'm not sure. I really wanted to give her a nose ring, but I think we're gonna leave it. I'm not too... Nah, I'm not too sure about that. Let's check. Well, it's not bad, but I'm, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna erase it. So yes, guys, there's still a lot of what we can do in terms of color blending, in terms of shading. Obviously, we haven't worked on the background, but just to give you an idea of what um, what steps I go through when I draw. And this is it, guys. This was Phoenix Energy. If you think that this video was useful or interesting, please support the channel. You know, that's a brand new one. Share, like, comment, subscribe. That is Phoenix Energy on YouTube. Hopefully, I will see you soon. Lots of love.